Um, Our reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 24 and going through to chapter 17, verse 8. So Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, and the words will come up on the screen, I think. Yes, they will. There you go. Thanks, Angeline. Can you use that one? Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say unto you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Chapter 17. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with them. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if It is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents for you, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came from the cloud, said, This is my beloved Son, which whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Well, hello again. Uh, Thank you very much to Evangeline for reading so well for us. That was super. Thank you too to uh, Katie and to Rachel and um, to to Becky and the rest of the team and folks who've participated this morning. And thank you too to our musicians, both for this morning and through the week, for playing so well um, for us. I'm just going to speak to you for a few minutes now. um, But before I do that, I've got a very quick quiz for you, okay? Now, you might need some help from an adult with some of the questions. Uh, Adults, uh, you might need some help from some other adults with um, some of the questions. It's multiple choice. You are allowed to confer, but please, when you see the question on the screen, don't shout out the answer right away. Um, We'll we'll, we'll draw the answers together at the end. So um, slide, please, Samuel. Wonderful. Here's the question. If you can't see, um, you can hopefully see the big flag in the corner. The question is, which country's flag is this? either New Zealand A, B, Samoa, C, Australia, or D, Fiji. I'll give you 30 seconds to chat to the person next to you uh, and see if you can come up with the right answer. Here we chat. Well, we'll we'll come back together. We'll come back together. And uh, we'll run through some answers. I'm going to ask you to throw a hand up for each one as I walk through them, okay? First one, who thought this is the flag of New Zealand? Hands up if you thought it was New Zealand. Great, okay, quite a few folks. Super, well done, okay. Secondly, who thought it was uh, answer B? Who thought it was Samoa? Got one or two folks, great, super, okay. Who thought it was um, C? Who thought it was Australia? Great, a few more people. Excellent. Who thought it was D, Fiji? Excellent, a few more folks. And I think that means that there are at least some of us who are a bit anxious about putting a hand up. (laughs) Because not everyone's hand was up. That's okay. The answer, I'll tell you, was New Zealand. So if you guess New Zealand, well done. Great. Okay, we'll just try one more, okay? Uh, Next slide, please, Samuel. Whose flag is this one? Okay, it's a bit trickier. Again, don't shout it out. Four possible answers. Portugal, A. B, Trinidad and Tobago, C, Sealand, yep, running thin on answers there, and D, Papua New Guinea. Again, 30 seconds and I'll draw us back in a minute, okay?
Okay, we'll draw it back together. I'm guessing if you don't know it, then you don't know it. So the longer time doesn't really necessarily help. We'll draw it back together and let's again go through our answers. Who thought this was A, the flag of Portugal? So somebody verbally thought it was. There's somebody in the back corner. Great, okay, super. And B, who thought it was Trinidad and Tobago? Okay, quite a lot of you thought Trinidad and Tobago. Great, super guess. Who thought it was C, Sealand? Okay, we've got one very high hand in the corner there. Great, super. And who thought it was D, Papua New Guinea? Great, super. And then again, um, some folks are a bit anxious about putting a hand up. That's okay. Um, well, the answer to this one is that in one sense, uh, none of you were right. <laughs> ah, boo. Okay. Because this is the flag of this place here. Next slide, please, Samuel. Great. This is the flag of this place here. This is an offshore platform in the North Sea. It's about 12 kilometers off the coast of Suffolk. It was built during the Second World War, and it's called Ruff's Tower. Since 1967, Ruff's Tower has been occupied by the family and friends of a man called Paddy Roy Bates. And in 1975, Bates took the rather bold step of pronouncing that this is a country, a sovereign state. And when he did so, he gave Ruff's Tower another name. He named the country Sealand. Okay, so we did have one correct answer over here. If you guessed Sealand, well done. And now, Sealand has never been officially recognized as a real country by any other country or by other world leaders, but that didn't stop Prince Roy, okay? And actually, since Prince Roy retired a few years ago, it hasn't stopped his son, Prince Michael of Sealand. They gave Sealand its own flag, as we've seen this morning. They gave it its own national anthem. It has its own money, its own currency, which is apparently pegged to the value of the US dollar. And it even has its own passport system, all for this place here, a platform in the middle of the sea. Now, why on earth am I telling you about Ruff's Tower or Sealand? Well, I want all of you for a moment just to imagine that Prince Michael of Sealand came to see you, okay? And he knocks at the front door of your house, and when you open the door, he tells you that he wants you to become one of his followers. He wants you to listen to him, and to do what he says. And not only that, he says it's actually going to be quite costly to follow him. It's going to be quite hard. You should be willing to give up everything you have in order to follow him. Now, I wonder what you would say to Prince Michael as he's standing on your doorstep. Can I tell you what I would say? I think I would firstly say, how, who, who are you? And how did you get my address? And then I think I would say, no, thank you. I know you're telling me to follow you, but I'm not going to do it. And I'm guessing that lots of us would say something similar to that, some, I guess, more politely than others. Why? Well, because Prince Michael isn't even a, a real prince. He might call himself the leader of a country. He might think that that means he can tell you what to do, but he isn't a real prince, is he? He doesn't have any real right to tell me what to do, does he? We don't have to do what Prince Michael says. Now this week, lots of you have been hearing about Jesus at Holiday Club and at Legacy, and you've been hearing that he called lots and lots of different people to come and to follow him. And when he told, he told them to follow him, he told them two different things. Firstly, he said it was going to be costly to follow him, that you'd have to give things up. And we saw that in the first part of our reading this morning, didn't we? If you could pop the next slide on, please, Samuel. Great, thank you. Jesus says this, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that means that following Jesus will mean doing what Jesus wants us to do instead of doing what we want to do. And that sounds like it might be quite a hard thing, doesn't it? But Jesus also told them something else. He told them that it would be so, so much better to follow him than not to follow him. He said that knowing him and having, your, having Jesus as your friend now means you'll have him as your friend forever. And that's wonderful news. And he said that in our reading this morning as well, didn't he? Whoever would save his life now will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Listening to Jesus and following him will be so much better than saying no to him and going our own way. Better now and better forever. And if you've been at Holiday Club or Legacy this week, you've heard that message a few times throughout the week. 
But the thing is, when you get to, to, to this point in the week, well, you might be wondering whether Jesus telling us to follow him is a bit like Prince Michael of Sealand telling you to follow him. He might tell you to do something. He might call us to follow him. He might promise that even though it's hard, it's going to be worth it. But we don't really have to listen to him, do we? I mean, who's Jesus to tell you what to do? Who gave him the right? Well, what I want to say to you all this morning, and this is as much to the adults here as to you boys and girls, is just one thing. It's this. Jesus really is God's king, and so we should all listen to him when he calls us to follow him. Let me say that again. If you forget everything else I say this morning, remember this. Jesus really is God's king, so we should all listen to him when he calls us to follow him. Now, how do we know that Jesus really is God's king? Well, again, I want you to do some imagining. Imagine the doorbell rings again. And when you answer the door this time, it isn't Prince Roy. It isn't even Prince Michael standing there. This time, the queen is standing on your doorstep, okay? That'd be pretty amazing. It'd be a bit of a surprise. The queen standing on your doorstep. Now, if the queen told you to do something, well, you might be a little bit more likely to listen to her than to Prince Michael, mightn't you? Because she's an actual queen. She isn't just pretending. But before you listen to her, you might want to be absolutely sure that she really is the queen. So you might want to check what she looks like against a picture of the real queen to make sure that she isn't just somebody who's dressed up as the queen. You might want to ask some other people who, who would know if she really is the queen. And only after you've made sure that she definitely is who she says she is, then you might think, well, I should really listen to what she's saying, shouldn't I? And that's a little bit like what happened in the second part of our reading this morning. The reading began with Jesus telling people that they should follow him. But how do they know whether they should listen to him or not? And as we're asking ourselves this morning, how do we know whether we should listen to him and follow him or not? Well, after telling people to follow him, Jesus took some of his followers up a mountain. They reached the top of the mountain when something amazing happened. Hey, next slide, please, Samuel. Thank you. Matthew tells us that Jesus' face shone like the sun. His clothes became white as light, and behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Now, it's been a really sunny week in Aberdeen this week, hasn't it? But I'm guessing that you haven't seen anyone's face shining like the sun. That just isn't normal, is it? But that's what Jesus looks like on the mountain. His face is shining like the sun. Jesus looks really special. He looks different from anyone else when he's standing on the mountain. And not only is his face shining, not only does he look different, but Moses and Elijah are there with him too. Moses and Elijah were two really important people from the Old Testament. And here they are talking with Jesus. And all of that's meant to suggest that Jesus is really special by the way he looks, by the company he keeps, Jesus isn't your average kind of man or even your average kind of teacher. He's really different. And as we read on, we find out just how different. Next slide, please, Samuel. Thank you. While Jesus was speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So Jesus looks special on the mountain with his face shining. He's keeping some amazing company with Moses and Elijah. And then most amazingly of all, God himself speaks. And God says, this is my son. See, Jesus really is from God. He really is God's king. He really is who he says he is. And why does any of that matter? Well, the voice from the cloud tells us, doesn't it? This is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. See, this morning I've asked you to imagine that Prince Michael's been knocking on your door and that the queen has been knocking on your door. But neither of those things are ever really going to happen, are they? But one person is really knocking on your door. Not a prince, not a queen even, but a king. 
King Jesus. And he isn't knocking on the door to your home, but on the door to your life. And he's come to say to you, follow me. However old you are, however young you are, whether you've been thinking about it for a while or whether this week is the first time you've ever really thought about it, follow me, says King Jesus. It's going to be costly, but listen, it's so worth it. Follow me. And if you're tempted this morning to say, well, who's Jesus to tell me what to do? Why should I listen to him? Well, we've seen this morning that he is who he says he is. The shining face, the appearance of Moses and Elijah, God himself speaking from a cloud, all proves that Jesus is God's king. And if that isn't enough for you, well, on Friday, some of you thought about Jesus dying on a cross so that each of us could be forgiven, could be made right with God, and then three days later, rising again to life. Only God's king could do that. Only God's king could beat death like that. Jesus really is God's king. So when he calls us to follow him, he tells us it's worth it. We should listen to him. Final slide, please, Samuel. Thank you. So my question to each of us this morning is whether we'll listen to him and follow him. As he knocks on the door to your life, will you follow King Jesus? Now listen, if you have any questions about any of that, please do speak to any of your leaders from Holiday Club or from Legacy. Speak to an older Christian you might know and ask those questions often. Speak to me. Please feel free to do that. Ask them what, 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 you, what your questions are. Ask them what you'd like to know. And if you would like to follow him, well, I'm going to pray just now, just a very short prayer, and you can pray, pray along with that prayer too and ask him to, to be your king. Say you're sorry for the times you've rejected him and gone your own way. Ask him to forgive you and commit yourself to follow him, to follow King Jesus. So let me just pray for us very briefly as we draw towards a close. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you are good and that you are kind and that you love us. We thank you that you loved us enough to send your son Jesus, our King who lived a perfect life, who died on the cross, and who rose again, all so that we could be made right with you. That even though all of us have turned our backs on you and gone our own way, that because Jesus died for us, we can be friends with you now and forevermore. And Father, I pray that for each of us here this morning, you would help us please to listen to King Jesus as he calls us to follow him, to trust that even though he says it means saying no to ourselves and what, me, what we might want and saying yes to him and what he might want, that it's absolutely worth it. It's worth it now and it's worth it forevermore. Help us to follow him with the rest of our lives. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.